Hello, I'm John Adams, editor of Digital Photo, and welcome to this video lesson where we're going to look at creating long exposure effects in Photoshop or Elements. Both these software packages have a selection of blur filters that can emulate the streaking clouds and smooth, misty water of a genuine long exposure landscape. And provided you can restrict them to the right parts of the image, you can get a great effect from any suitable shot. We've picked this sunset picture of Normanton Church at Rutland Water to demonstrate the technique, but you can use it on any picture with a great sky and an expanse of water to get a similar looking effect. Now the original picture is great, with some wonderful colours and detail, but for a more ethereal look we can turn it into this, and send our clouds scudding across the sky and get our lake shimmering in an arty blur. The technique itself requires some selections, some layers and some layer masks, but it's easy to do. So let's go back to our original picture and we'll get cracking. So once your landscape is opened up into Photoshop or Elements, the first thing you want to do is make a copy layer. Now that's really easy, just hit Ctrl and J on the keyboard. You won't see any change there, but if you go to Window and choose Layers to look at your Layers panel, you can see there we've got Layer 1 sitting above the background, and that's a carbon copy of the original picture. Now I'll just move my layers down and out the way a bit. What we're now going to do is pick up the Quick Selection tool, because if we just blur this sky, we're going to blur the church alongside it, and we'll blur this horizon as well. We want to blur just the parts that would be affected by a long exposure. So what I'm going to do is pick up the Quick Selection tool from the toolbox. There it is there. It's grouped actually with the Magic Wand tool, so if you see your Magic Wand instead, then mouse down and select the Quick Selection tool. And you'll find these options at the bottom of the screen in the Tool Options bar in Elements. I'm in Photoshop for this example. Now what we're going to do, we're going to make sure we've got a nice small brush and we're just going to drag along this horizon line and the Quick Selection tool will quickly select it. A well-named tool there. And we'll go over the church here, that's got most of that. So it's nice and easy and just makes a, a quick rough and ready selection around your image. I'll just drag right across to the other side of the frame. That should do the trick nicely. Now at the moment we've got this strip of horizon and the church selected, but what we actually want is a selection of the sky. So we need to get the opposite of our selection, and that's called the inverse of the selection. Easy way to remember it is just to pop up to select and choose inverse, or if you want to remember the shortcut, it's shift Control i I for inverse to help you remember it. So we'll click on that, and now we get the other areas other than this strip selected. So the strip we've got is now unselected along with the church, and the sky and the water is selected. So with that done, we're now going to punch the selected area into a new layer. And we use the same shortcut as we did just a little while ago, Control and J. And that gives us a layer 2 here, which doesn't have the church in the picture. What we're now going to do is blur this layer. So we go up to Filter, down to Blur, and then across to Radial Blur. That's the one we want. And in the Radial Blur dialog, we've got two options. We've got Spin or we've got Zoom. And we're going to pick Zoom for this particular effect. In terms of quality, you can go for Draft is quick, Good is medium in terms of timing, and Best is the best one but uses lots of processing power. So I'm just going to select Good for this option. And then what we have to do is get our amount to... It depends on how much streaking you want in your image. But I'm going to go for about... I think about sort of 17 or so in this picture. We don't see a preview. This is an old school dialog box, so you don't have a preview, so there's a bit of guesswork involved. But I'm going to go for about 17 in amount, and then the blur center, I need to drag that to the right part of the image. Now I want my blur center, that's where the radial blur emanates from, I want that to be round about in this sun area here, because that would be the part of the sky that's moving least. So we've got it, it's just under halfway up the image and over to the left. So what we do is drag this blur center across to just under halfway and over to the left. We'll try that first of all, so all we're going to do is click OK and see what happens. There we have a blurring effect. That wasn't a bad attempt actually, I'm almost spot on. So that was a good shot. If you find you get it wrong, all you have to do is hit Ctrl and Z to undo the filter, and then hit Ctrl Alt F, and that will bring your dialog box straight back up again. All you have to do then is move your blur center to where you want it, nudge it a bit to the right, a bit to the left, whatever your last attempt told you to do, 
and then hit OK again. Normally in about three goes if you do it that way you'll get it exactly where you want it. But I rather luckily got it spot on first time. OK so we've applied our nice blurring effect and we've got a good long exposure sky coming through and we've got some nice blurring in the water as well. But if we zoom in on the church itself you'll see that we've got a bit of ghosting going on around the edges. That doesn't look natural. We want this to be hard edged and standing out proud of the blur effect. So to do that we're going to use a layer mask. And all we have to do in the layers panel is click on the add layer mask icon. Click on that and you'll see a white rectangle appear alongside your blurry sky and blurry water layer. What we're going to do now is paint black into this layer mask and that will restore the hard edges to our subject. Effectively we're painting a hole within this layer to see the sharp layer from beneath this one here. So we pick up a brush tool and then to make sure you got black as the foreground colour hit D on the keyboard and then hit X to swap them over and that gives you black as the foreground colour. We want a soft edge brush and I can get a soft edge brush by holding shift and tapping the left square brackets key just keep on tapping it until you can tap no more and that will give you the softest brush possible and then I'm just going to increase brush size without holding shift and tapping the right square brackets key just to go up in size something like that should be okay. I've got about a hundred pixels here but uh, it depends on the size of your image and the resolution of your photograph. Once I've done that I want to reduce the opacity of the brush to about 40%. Now to do that I can click on this drop down arrow here and move the opacity slider or alternatively I can just hit 4 on the keyboard and that will give me a quick 40%. Once I've done that I'm going to make sure the mask is active and you can see there there's a line around it. You can't paint into a mask if the layer thumbnail is active so make sure that mask is active. Then we just start painting away and we restore the hard edges to our church. So I'll just whip around the edge of the church. This is taking out the little bit of blur that's come across the image. There we go, we'll just paint across there. Then I can hold down the spacebar, scroll around and make sure I restore those hard edges and the full opacity to that part of the image. A little bit along the horizon as well. Now I'll whiz through here and just tidy up the edges, we're okay around there. A little bit of ghosting here, so I'll just paint over that and restore those edges. And now if I double click the hand tool, I'll go back to full screen, we can see we've got a nice solid church rather than that sort of slightly transparent edged church that we had before. Now this area here, we wouldn't have the blur running into shingle, that would be static, so that needs to be hard edged and clear as well. So we can carry on masking now, we've got our layer mask enabled, so we pick up our brush and simply keep on masking. I'll use a bigger brush now, there we go, and I'll still keep painting with a 40% opacity, we need to restore those hard edges. Now I need a smaller brush here, just to paint in around that edge, that's it, and now a bigger brush. I need to just feather the edge of this kind of a beach area to get a nice long exposure effect on the water but a nice hard edge and a very clear edge to the shingle itself. So that's the kind of thing we just need to keep on working away with the brush. If it goes wrong and you go too far and perhaps go over this area here where you want some blurring all you've got to do is swap to a white brush by hitting X on the keyboard and then you can paint back the blurring. There's the kind of thing and before long you'll get a seamless blend that looks just like a long exposure. And that looks pretty good there. Okay I'll just check that by zooming in because we've got to make sure we get a nice accurate job and that's not bad at all. Maybe we'll get a bit more brush work in here, smaller brush and just make sure we've got the right kind of area selected. And that looks pretty good, that's got a nice long exposure effect. Now if we come back to full screen by double clicking the hand tool, that's not a bad effect at all. But there's an extra step we can take just to spruce it up a little bit. At the moment we've got this nice motion blur through the water, but it doesn't look quite natural. There's still a bit too much detail going on. If this was a true long exposure, all the ripples in the water would smooth out. So we can do that, and we'll just make another selection of the water. So we'll grab our freehand lasso tool. Then all we're going to do is make a nice rough and ready selection all the way around the water. This is quite quick and easy to do, so we'll just go around the water, around the edge here, and all the way around the bottom of the picture, back up the side, and there's our water selected. 
Now to soften the edge of that selection, we're just going to click on the Refine Edge button, up in the Tool Options bar in Photoshop, and down in the Tool Options bar in Elements, click on Refine Edge, and the only slider we need to worry about here is the Feather slider. You can see here we've got a hard edge around our selection, we need to soften that so we get a nicer blend. So we just nudge up the Feather slider, bit by bit, until we've got a nice soft edge. And I think that's a little bit too much at the moment, so I'm going to go for round about 30 pixels. Once you've done that, click OK, and that gives you a soft edge selection around that area you've just selected. Now that's done, what we want to do is punch this water area into a new layer. Now at the moment we've got a layer mask active, so we need to make sure the layer itself is active, and then we can punch it in. So make sure you've clicked the mouse on the layer thumbnail, and you've got this uh, border around this area rather than the mask. And once you've done that, hit Ctrl and J, and you'll punch your water into a new layer. You can see it on its own if you want to, switch off these other layers, and you can see there, there's our water selection with a feathered edge. So we know we've got the right part of the image, now we'll switch our other layers back on again. And what we're going to do to this layer here is add some motion blur. We've already got zoom blur, but we want to smooth it out. So we'll go up to filter, down to blur, and across to motion blur. Now the motion blur dialog box allows you to add blur in a particular direction. Now our water is obviously level, so we want our angle to be horizontal. So we'll turn that round until we've got 0 degrees. Or if you can't get 0 degrees by fiddling about with it, just highlight the box and tap 0. Once we've done that, we need to establish how many pixels we want it to blur. And that's done in the distance box. And I think for this example, somewhere around 40 pixels will be OK. Now, you can't see anything in the preview because we're on the wrong part of the image. But if we do click on a certain part, you can see here that's where our water is. You can target that anywhere you like and you'll see your water preview. It's at 100%, but you can always zoom back a bit by using these boxes here, minus and plus, to go in and out, and that will show you how your blur effect is taking shape. And that doesn't look too bad there. I'll just click the preview on and off to see the difference. And yeah, you can see a subtle smoothing across the water's surface, and that's what I'm after. So about 40 pixels or thereabouts, click OK, and there we have a fabulous long exposure effect. You can see the difference between the before and the after. If we just switch off these layers here, we go back to our normal regular exposure with sharp water and sharp clouds. But by adding our blur effects, masking off the right parts of the image, we can get a wonderful long exposure effect really easily. And the only thing you might want to do is just soften that motion blur effect around the edges just to make it as good as possible. And I think this image needs it, so I'm going to make sure my top layer is selected. That's where we applied the motion blur, and then we'll add another layer mask to it. We'll pick up our brush tool, make sure we've got black as the foreground colour and an opacity of about 40%. Then I'll just increase brush size a bit, and I'll just blend away that edge just to make sure it looks nice and natural and we get a good seamless join. That's the kind of thing, just gently around the edge of the image, and I think that looks great. So with a quick selection and just a few layers and a bit of masking work, we can transform a scene into a great looking long exposure. Now, whether you've created your long exposure in this way using Photoshop, or you've simply shot one in camera and opened it up into Photoshop, there is another little trick you can do to make sure your image looks absolutely fantastic. Let me just flatten the image first of all, so we've created our picture here, we just go to layer and we choose flatten image to crunch it down into one layer. And that's the kind of thing you get if you had in fact taken your shot with your camera and got your long exposure for real. Now we've done that, to add a bit more bite to the static parts of the frame, it's a good idea to add some sharpening. This won't make an out of focus shot appear sharp, but it will increase the contrast on the edges in the shot, giving you a sharper, more detailed appearance. So to apply sharpening in a neat way, all you've got to do is duplicate the layer. We know that one, that's Control and J. And then we're going to change the blending mode from where it says normal to overlay. So we select overlay from the drop down blending modes and our colors go weird. But don't worry about that for the time being, because what we're going to do is apply a filter to this layer. And that filter is called high pass. Not easy to find. You go up to filter, down to other, and then go across to high pass. And you get this uh, rather strange looking dialog box. And if we click on part of the image that we want to be sharp, such as the, uh, the church side here, we can see this rather strange grey looking image. I'll just zoom back a little bit so you can see it. 
there we can see the definition of the edges within the picture. And what we do is slide the radius up, normally between about 3 and 10 pixels is plenty. If you go too far, it starts to break up and look rather odd. So I'm going to go for about 7 pixels on this image. Yeah, I think 7 looks pretty good. And once I've done that, I'm going to click OK. And if we zoom in tight on that part of the image there, we can see the difference it makes. If I turn it off, you see a slight softening around the edges, but when I turn it on, you see a real sharpness biting through the image. And if it's too much, you can simply reduce the opacity of that layer and just tone it down a little bit to get a natural result. Now, you only want your high pass to be operating where the sharpness needs to occur. You don't need it in your sky and you don't need it in your water. So if we just uh, double click the hand tool to come back to full screen, what we need to do now is to mask off the parts of the high pass filter that aren't required. So we add a layer mask, we grab our black brush, and we increase brush size to get it. There we go, a nice big brush. I'm going to increase the opacity now to 100% because I want full black to mask off these areas. And if I just move my layers palette out the way a bit, as I paint away, you can see black appearing within the layers. And that means we're getting rid of the effect of the high pass filter in those particular places. So I'll just paint round, around the water. There we go. And I'll paint all the way over the sky. We don't want any high pass going on there. And I'll just get it roughly around the church. That's the sort of thing. And in this bit of the sky here, so we make sure it's all gone. If you want to see your mask itself, just hold down the Alt key and click on the mask itself, and that will show you where your masking has occurred. You can actually paint in that mode as well to get rid of the mask where you don't want it. So that's a quick way of doing it. Hold down Alt and click on the mask again to see it return to normal. Right, so we'll now just zoom in on the church because that's the main area of detail. And we can use our brush, a smaller brush this time, perhaps with a lower opacity. I'll just drop it down to 40% and we can just paint around the edge to make sure we haven't got the high pass appearing where we don't want it to. That's the sort of thing. So you can work around the edges and just blend it in to make sure you get a nice seamless result. And once it's all done, if we do zoom in again, you can see there when we switch that high pass layer on and off, there's a big difference in sharpness. All that edge contrast is really helping the image to pop. OK, so that's an additional tip. No matter whether you use your camera for long exposures or you create one in Photoshop, adding that little bit of sharpening to your static elements in the frame will make them all the better. All right, then enjoy creating your long exposures. And when you've made one you're really pleased with, remember to send it in to us at the magazine at dpimages at bowermedia.co.uk because we love to see the pictures you're creating. Alright, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.